Good morning and welcome to A Closer Look. I'm your host, Linda Fontaine. Today, my guests are Valerie Arrington, yes. who is a case manager with A Safe Harbor Home, yes. and CEO and founder, Daniel Velez of A Safe Harbor Home. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, what is A Safe Harbor Home? How did it come to be? Uh, Safe Harbor Home came as a result. Uh, my wife went to a meeting in Johnson City and she heard that there was a need for victims of domestic violence after they came out the emergency shelter. They had no place where to go. As a result of that, they were forced to go back into an abusive relationship, go back with family or just uh, going anywhere they could or going out to the streets. So when she got home that evening, uh, she told me about the situation and she said, do you think we can do something about this? Mm -hmm. And I said, of course we can, let's go ahead. And we started uh, making plans that same night and she said, what are we gonna call it? Mm -hmm. So I immediately told her a safe harbor home. So we started the process of uh, creating the, uh, the 501c3 and we were blessed that typically the, these uh, processes take many months. Mm -hmm. um, and we were blessed that in two and a half months, we already had our 501c3. And we started working with victims of domestic violence. Uh, a couple years later then, what happened was that we had the opportunity to start serving uh, homeless. And we started serving homeless with a disability. What we do typically is we provide them with housing. Mm -hmm. We pay 70% of their housing if they have income. If they have no income, we pay 100%. But uh, they don't go just to any place. They can go to any place where any citizen uh, can go find a place to live. And they, they find their own place. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do an inspection, make sh making sure that they're living in a decent place. And from there, once they are, um, they, the place is approved, then they sign the lease right there and they get uh, their key right there. So wow. it's not like, the, it's a process that they have to wait for a long time after they have been approved. Mm -hmm. Uh, the only thing that takes a little bit longer is the application process because they have to go through uh, a screening. Uh, they, we do uh, an assessment of their situation to make sure that not only we are serving them in the area that they are in need, which is housing, but if they are in need of other services, what we have done is we have partnership with other agencies and we provide, we provide them services through those resources. Mm -hmm. So through our program, they get the housing services and then through the resources that we have, they get counseling and they get other services that they may be in need of. So um, after a couple of years working with victims of domestic violence and uh, um, homeless with a disability, then we were able to start serving homeless, not just homeless with a disability, but homeless. We also serve uh, an accompanied youth, which is our children who come out of the system, um, and they are between the ages of 18 and 24, and they have nowhere to go. Oh, wow. They can come through our program, and we can house them too. So we started doing that. We also serve veterans. If there is a veteran that is in need of housing, and they have, they have not, known where to go, what to do, they can come to us. If we can, we connect them with, uh, with the veteran services, but uh, if for any reason they don't qualify with them, they might qualify with our program. Uh, recently, uh, in the month of September of 2018, we started uh, two recovery houses. Uh, under the umbrella of a safe harbor home. This is a sober uh, living um, re uh, housing for individuals who are in recovery. Um, they, they must be clean. If they are not, if somebody who is not clean but desires to come through our program, what we do is we refer them um, to take treatment 20, at least a 28-day program, mm -hmm. and if, um, we also send them to IOP, uh, Intensive Outpatient uh, Services, uh, and once they come out of that, they can 
they can apply, to, while they're doing that, they can apply for our program and if they qualify, they can come into the house. It's a peer model, which means that uh, while they're residing in the home with other individuals like them, we have one house for men and one house for women. So as they are residing with these other individuals, these, this is the, the population that's going to give them the support that they need in addition mm -hmm. to the services that we provide. So really what, what we try to do is we try to bring in the resource of other individuals who are who are in the same situation where they are at, uh, they give input, they have weekly meetings, um, they, they share with each other responsibilities in the house, they share with other, each other the issues that they may deem to necessary. So uh, we try to do as much as we can for them. In addition to that, we have Valerie, who is the case manager, and Valerie has done a great job. Uh, she sits down with them every week and she discusses issues that need to be addressed. We don't want issues to grow into the houses mm -hmm. and wait too long to resolve them. So this, this system really works really well. In addition to that, we have uh, weekly team meetings. And the weekly team meetings, what we do is there's a group of us that uh, uh, discuss the cases and discuss the situations in the house so we can know, each other can know what, what's happening in the house and what's, what's not happening, what needs to happen, mm -hmm. any adjustments that need to be done. So it's r worked really, really well. Um, so in addition to that, <laughs> we just uh, received yesterday the uh, Greenville Cumberland Presbyterian Church allowed us to use a building uh, so we can use our, uh, you can use it as a recovery center for our events that we need to do. So uh, the community has in large been very cooperative with us. We've had a very good response from the community. and. Uh, we, we feel that we are reaching people who have a real need mm -hmm. and reaching them where yes. they're at. It's not like you come into the program, you adjust to us, that's, that's part of it, but we reach them where they're at because not everybody's at the same place. Well, so tell we try me, to do that. Where are you located? We, our main office is located in Greenville and uh, residents, the residences are also located in Greenville. Okay, and how long have you guys been around? How long has Safe Harbor Home been Safe in Harbor existence? Home started in 2008. Guess you guys with have the grown victims. fast, haven't you? Yes, yes, and uh, I should say that it's been because of the response of the community, and uh, we have also been blessed. The only person who uh, has a salary in our program is Valerie. Uh, everybody else is a voluntary. Me, I am a voluntary, uh, um, a volunteer. My wife, who's also a co-founder with me, uh, she's a volunteer. Uh, and we have uh, other other volunteers that come into the program. And it's it's been magnificent because we can share from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the team meetings, we can share things from different perspectives. And we can take that into account. So the way the program works is not just because I'm the CEO, I make the decisions. I want to hear from everybody else so mm -hmm. we can make a decision that's really informed, educated, and it's for the benefit of the people who we serve because that's why we are here. Mm -hmm. We are here to serve them. So we need to we need to find out if we're doing the right thing. Well, how can somebody find out about you? They can call to our telephone number, which is 423-218-0774. They can also go into our website, which is a safeharborhome.org. And there they will find a description of all the programs that we have. And it sounds like you have a lot of programs. Yes, we do. And oh, in growing. addition to that, <laughs> we, we still have something else. Uh, we have the Katie Key Project. This is a, this is a, a um, dating violence recovery, um, dating violence uh, program for children from middle school through high school. 
It's a four week, one and a half, one to one and a half hour program where we talk to kids about dating violence. Uh, believe it or not, hmm. um, dating violence is becoming violence. A, yeah. a big issue in the schools mm -hmm. when girls uh, or boys have girlfriends or boyfriends who are calling them every five minutes, where are you, what are you doing? So we teach them how to look at these things, how to look at the possibility that they are becoming victims of dating violence. And in some cases where they are not becoming those victims, they may have friends uh, that are victims of dating violence, and we teach them how to approach those friends. Because wow. the typical reaction is, mm -hmm. well, why don't you leave him? Uh, it's not that simple. It's mm -hmm. just like in domestic violence, it's not that it's simple. It's not that simple. But uh, the friends need to be there. They need that support. They need to know that they can count on somebody because being a victim uh, and you feel by yourself, that's highly dangerous. And we want to make sure that we equip as many as we can to deal with those issues. All right, now we have covered a lot of information already yes. and 12 minutes has gone by wow. like that. So go. we're gonna go ahead and take a break. Sure. And then we will talk some more about a safe harbor home when we come back Sounds in just good. a minute.